नमस्ते आदाब सत एंड हेलो आई वेलकम यू टू द लेटेस्ट एडिशन ऑफ इंडिया टॉक एट टैक टी वी एज सम ऑफ यू माइट नो ऑफ द न्यूज़ दैट इज़ कमिंग फ्रॉम इंडिया द ट्विट द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया माइट शट डाउन ट्विटर अमिड ऑल दिस कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी इज द कोविड सिचुएशन इन इंडिया टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डू सम पोस्ट एनालिसिस ऑफ द कोविड सिचुएशन द रिस्पॉन्स ऑफ द इंडियन गवर्नमेंट एंड इट्स ऑपोजिशन पार्टीज and to do this i have rupa murthy ji with me on this panel she is a well known social media influencer and has a unique view of looking at indian politics but before we begin i want to share a small video with you uh, oxygen outages have resulted in in deaths what's the solution to enhance the medical infrastructure in terms of beds in terms of oxygen supplies dr shetty radhi first of all everyone criticizes the government it's very easy to criticize i'll tell you the number of covid patients what we have currently no government in the world can manage you leave alone american government you put american government british government and all the european can they will not be able to manage the number of patients what we are saddled with okay and i have done a lot of my homework uh, to assess what went wrong with oxygen believe me government has done a phenomenal job they have moved heaven and earth to give oxygen to people but the difficulty is from 900 tons of oxygen if it goes to 9000 tons in few days there is no logistical system available to uh, shift that much of oxygen we may say that okay the, all the steel factories produce abundant oxygen but only 3% of that oxygen can be transported they are in the liquid form and there are less than 1500 tankers which can shift and these tankers cannot move more than 30 miles per hour and most of the oxygen producing steel plants are in the uh, uh, western india and eastern india and most of the covid patients are in northern india these tankers have to move 1500 kilometers it is not it is a herculean task i know they have used every possible means to give oxygen but still people are dying i know i feel sad that we couldn't save precious life because of the oxygen but that is the nature of the disease and we have to realize that health sector was ignored since independence every government irrespective of the color they never bothered about investing on creating infrastructure for health care and this is what we are paying now namaste rupa ji uh, i again uh, welcome you to india talk at tag tv so we'll we'll straight away move to the agenda for today so i i am told that you went to india uh, some time back as well so i i want to have a first uh, kind of a first hand experience from you how is this covid situation in india and uh, if you can talk a little more in detail about uh, you know if you can do a comparison between the indian response and the west res- the response of the western countries in the in the covid situation so if you can do that to sure. begin with thanks for having me on your um, show once again um i'll definitely uh, do a comparison you know a few days ago i had written a post actually on social media which went viral uh, i believe on whatsapp as well uh, uh, comparing what uh, uh, basically detailing what uh, we in the west we in the us went through what healthcare uh, challenges were uh, you know so you know back uh, from the from the get go when the covid started i have been continuously warning people uh, on social media to be careful to take it seriously and at that time a lot of our fellow indians on social media tried to dismiss it as a, a hoax a propaganda by the uh, by the pharma companies and you know and they even accused me of colluding with china and pharma companies in spreading fear and uh, unwanted uh, panic some of them even unfriended me and uh, 
and followed me. But then as people started to take it seriously, as they realized this was not a hoax, they were still very hesitant to uh, to wear the masks. There were many debates on the, you know, the positives and negatives of uh, wearing a mask. It happened on my post. And most of them were still leaning towards not wearing the mask. America went through a nightmare. We had shortages of uh, PPE, drugs, beds. You know, uh, the hospitals were really full. The marks were overflowing. Uh, the funeral homes were overwhelmed with the number of bodies. So it was it was really bad. And at that time, uh, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Trump, wasn't very uh, reasonable in handling it. And I, being a Trump supporter myself, I'm saying this, and I have voiced it, uh, voiced my disapproval very publicly. Uh, you know, there comes a time when it's not about politics at all, when it's not about who you support, which political party you support. It simply boils down to the welfare and uh, safety and health of people. So, um, you know, initially people, there were pe many people in the US too who thought they were invincible, uh, they couldn't get COVID infection, they ended up, and since we didn't have a lockdown in the US, a uh, lot of them went out partying, got infected, became super spreaders. And uh, while all this was going on in the US, the press was taking uh, Mr. Uh, Trump, to, President Trump, to task. Of course, you know people who voted for him, who were his supporters, were questioning him, and rightly so. Uh, there were riots in some of the bigger cities. People were acting like you know it's business as usual. But people in smaller cities and smaller towns kind of realized they, you know, they were alerted. They were like, hey, something is not right. We need to take charge. Though it was a little late, nonetheless, they took charge. They kind of came together. They forgot all the political differences. They came together. They they realized the importance of working towards a common goal. You know, at that time, it was containing COVID. It was brutal for healthcare workers. And I will never forget the amount of support we received from the community, from local businesses, from you know, fast food chains, they were really, really supportive. And meanwhile, in India, it was being very well controlled. And all thanks to Mr. Po Modi for, you know, imposing a lockdown on, on the nation. Now, did it not cause hardships? Absolutely, it did. It was a big inconvenience, big, uh, you know, it, disaster, if you will, for people that were not as privileged. Who else would know this better than I? I have been, you know, maintaining the uh, expenses of very many families for the last one, one and a half years now. So I know what the situation is, you know, what the uh, battles were. I'm very aware of that. Still, this lockdown helped contain the spread of COVID, which would have been disastrous given the population in India. Now, even then, the news was predominantly about how uh, tortured the uh, underprivileged were in India because of Modi's lockdown. You know, while in America, we were, the bodies were piling up exponentially, but, you know, while the Indian, I mean, while the American press was very uh, restrained and responsible in reporting, they didn't make a mockery of the deaths. You know, yes, they were against Trump, they were questioning him, but it didn't become an international mockery. And you know, like some journalists, even then, couldn't stop painting Mr. Modi as an oppressor of the underprivileged. And since many people in India didn't uh, exactly know how bad the situation, especially in the healthcare uh, area, was, 
how many people lost jobs how people were you know they are straddled with in you know humongous hospital bills here and i would often see comments like how do you know what do you know how bad it is in india uh, you don't know you're sitting comfortably in america you you know once you lose somebody close to you to covid then you'll understand the pain what these people don't know is um in in a span of 4 to 6 months i have perhaps lost more uh, close love than you know near and dear ones to covid than uh, most of these people put together have lost in their lifetime so i exactly know what the pain is you know how how uh, disastrous this pandemic has been so this happened during the first wave and you know we somehow overcame this and you know we got through it. us got through it and then second wave hit india and you know as you know i recently re- returned from india i was there for a few weeks i i got a chance to travel around to some of the most populated states the first thing that stood out was people were not wearing masks yes the right cases were on rise in india at that point when i was there people were not wearing masks even if they were wearing masks they were not worn rightly social distancing was non existent and uh, i got a chance to visit some hospitals talk to the doctors and you know i noticed how people refused to follow rules i noticed people the families of covid patients fighting with the security because they were being restricted they were uh, you know the number of people that could visit a covid room was restricted and rightly so for obvious reasons but people didn't want to listen i mean i understand the emotional part i need the i understand the need to see your loved ones and you know i i understand all that but this is being done for the greater good you know so that you don't get infected the rest of the family members don't in, get infected but you know people were not ready to listen i witnessed the fights in front of uh you know happened in front of me i also witnessed poor ways of uh, handling of home quarantined uh, patients by the local governments i have written about it too it was quite a, a bad experience that i know you know i uh, observed when such is the case it gets really old when people repeatedly comment saying what do you know what do you know about the difficulties we are facing you know uh, so it became very important for me to let people know spell it out for them and uh, i'm not sure if you had a chance to read my post but i did write a post you know like i said earlier uh, spelling out all the difficulties comparing telling people hey look you're you know telling people in india you're not alone we've gone through this these are the things that you need to be doing or these are the things that american public did uh you know by most of the people received it in the right spirit there were people that felt i was uh, snubbing india i was that i was defending the current dispensation Uh, where there was no mention of any religion negatively there were people that try to drag in religion our religion and abuse it uh, you know i am only responsible for what i say i'm not responsible for what people understand so i had to kind of pick and choose my battles i chose to disregard this is what happened yeah here i i i just want to add a couple of uh, things uh, before we go to the next question like during the first wave uh, it it's you know it there was a lockdown and then things uh, seemed um, you know going in a in in the right direction and we were seeing um, i've seen my own friends going out going on vacations putting photographs from goa maldives and what not right and then uh, you have in india there there is a there are two categories right one is educated and then there is a english educated class as well so recently i think a couple of months back if i recall correctly there was a video uh, of a girl saying 
uh, I have cleared uh, mains and that is why I am not, uh, you know, I know what is the importance of wearing, of not wearing a mask. Then I saw another video which went viral, uh, I think it was somewhere in Bangalore, uh, where a doctor's son want, he was not wearing a mask and he wanted to enter the elevator and some people in the elevator told him to either wear the mask and then enter or let let us go first and then you come in the next one Good for them yeah but then uh, even that i think maybe he was a teenager and he was saying uh, you know the f word and he was abusive and then his father came to that man's uh, house and then uh, you know kind of thrashed him uh, and abused him so like i said there are some educated people and then there is there are english educated people so which are more dangerous in uh, True. These at this scenarios. juncture i want to point out there was a video that i uh, posted just a couple of days ago it's a doctor in karnataka in mangalore i believe uh, you know he's a well known doctor and he was at a supermarket and he ref he was refusing to wear the mask he did not and you know when the the store manager asked him to wear the mask there was this whole big uh, argument which was caught on the cctv mm -hmm. uh, you know when when people that are supposed to lead the way when people healthcare experts argue against wearing mask in a public i can understand if he was out and about just taking a picture just took the mask off for a few seconds i can understand but here you're out and about shopping and you're refusing to wear a mask when you know his argument was he was already uh, he had already been infected so he's immune so he doesn't have to wear a mask when the when there's a law when there's a rule made by the government that everybody needs to have their mask on how hard is it to follow it True. and you know lead the way set you know lead by example lead by but example. people don't want to do that it was all it somehow turned into anti government rent at that point and right. when that is the aim here it, it, it becomes really hard to reason with people true so now uh, I want to move on to the next question which I had in my mind so how do you see the Indian opposition's role during this uh, pandemic and especially in the second wave I mean we have seen uh, uh, you know post from Kum um, Mela then election rallies uh, unfortunately, not many people talked about the farmer protest. Everybody thought they are not the super spreaders. They are, they are somehow immune to uh, to coronavirus. So, how how do you how do you see the role of Indian opposition? At this juncture, it wouldn't be an exaggeration if I said India has the worst opposition leaders at this point. Now, had their concern been genuine, had it been for the welfare of the Indians, I would have definitely applauded them. I would have said, kudos. Thanks for you know thinking of India first, Indians first. Barring a, you know, a few leaders like uh, the former Prime Minister, Mr. Deve Gowda, who was uh, sensible, who was decent enough to write a personal letter to Prime Minister Modi uh, offering his valuable suggestions on this uh, you know, whole COVID pandemic on how to contain it without getting the press involved. Barring a few Congress leaders in Karnataka who worked along with, you know, together with Tejasvi Surya of BJP to help people during this whole BBMP bed scam, most of them are hopeless. Be it encouraging the Shaheen Bagh protests in the beginning of the pandemic or creating a ruckus when uh, the lockdown was imposed, encouraging and facilitating the, the circus called the farmers protest, which by the by is going to start all over again with the support of opposition. They've just sent a signed letter. The only person that has not signed the letter is obviously Mr. Modi and we all know he is going to be blamed in the end for it. You know, encouraging and defending the actions of the Tablighi Jamaat, causing severe vaccine hesitancy about, you know, Indian vaccines, 
openly fear mongering influencing their followers and supporters uh, to not take vaccine calling it bjp vaccine i mean has it been one or two what happened during the election rallies you know back in last year i guess when the bihar elections were happening ec proposed uh, digit holding digital rallies it was bjp and i believe it was jdu that were that agreed to it and guess who opposed it was congress and the rest of the people they did not want it they wanted the you know in person whatever rally you call it so this year with the west bengal elections ec i guess didn't even bother to propose it because the you know either way the opposition was going to object it so initially during the first wave i guess the center controlled everything and it was beautifully controlled and just before the second wave hit i believe the states wanted power and you know the center had to uh, give it to them what did the states do and this i'm talking about both bjp and non bjp uh, rural states did they contain the situation well they, were they prepared no there was none there was again more politics so you know it is easy to to sit and blame modi and demand his resignation i mean everything especially since that has been the agenda from the get go and this is this is india's opposition true i mean uh, i've seen uh, you know the the response of the indian opposition i think has been vulnerable and has not worked in the betterment of the situation and of people not at all i i'm i'm personally i'm i'm very disappointed uh not even a single tweet or action uh has come up where they where they are kind of helping the government or the people they just True. they're just doing the blame game and yeah. uh, you know it's like we are passing the parcel absolutely that brings me to my next question uh, and my next question is uh, we've heard there is some toolkit uh, issue which is going on so if you can quickly talk about it and i i don't know there are some news saying that this is a hoax or um, I, i don't know what what that is the toolkit so a few days ago certain documents were uh, leaked on the social media by the bjp uh, people bjp leaders which were allegedly a part of a you know a set of instructions if you will on ways to discredit prime minister modi so what was in this alleged toolkit now the bjp says and which you know most of us have seen the uh, seen what was in the toolkit that it was about uh, you know ca- calling the covid uh, variant that was found in india as modi variant you know zeroing in on the kumbh mela as the <coughs> super spreader basically it was about discrediting mr modi now the congress says it was a manipulate it was manipulated set of documents created by the bjp it cell to divert fr- the attention of the general public from the ongoing issues <laughs> now whether uh, these the toolkit exists or not is it not true that from the get go the opposition has been working on discrediting prime minister modi till now not one of them has been supportive of the actions i mean no matter what he did there was no cooperation from the opposition at all go through the tweets of uh, rahul gandhi or other congress leaders statements of uh, uh, akhilesh yadav or you know just tweets tweets from uh, anti modi section of the media or even these mr. intellectual i'm sorry i'm so i'd said even mr shashi tharoor exactly exactly so all of them have been so negative so you won't really need a toolkit to 
understand what's been or acknowledge what's been going on from the right from the beginning go through the scathing articles written against prime minister modi by some of the indian uh, journalists in the western publications pictures of pyres were sold to the highest bidders they were splashed all over the international magazines is that how any opposition cooperates and mind you you know this didn't happen overnight this is a smear campaign it's a, it's an ongoing smear campaign there is no concern for the general public here all they want to do is oust modi that's that's the only thing so you don't need a, a separate toolkit per per se to understand what's been going on anybody that's following even a neutral person who's been following will know what's going on right. so this while this toolkit the existence of a toolkit remains controversial or is being still you know investigated the contents have always been there so there's nothing new about it right uh, you know i i want to add one more context to this uh, i mean we, we can obviously see that there is some sort of a pharmaceutical war which is going on uh, at a global level and we see you know our opposition kind of uh, vouching for uh, companies like pfizer and other uh, e even the chinese vaccine as well but not trusting their own uh, their own uh, manufacturers even uh, uh, adan punawala had to uh, you know he had to flee and uh, settle down in 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 london so these are all the circumstances which you know somehow se seems fishy and uh, i also see i mean like like uh, the external uh, affairs minister mr jay shankar a few days back said like when when india sends out vaccine to other countries it is called vaccine maitri or vaccine diplomacy or friendliness but when other countries help out uh, india it's it's called an aid why why is that difference i mean why why the international media is talking about aid being given to india while when india gave the same vaccines to the uh, to you know 80 plus countries it was a friendly uh, gesture from india well i need to tell you something at this juncture so um, as you already know india uh, produces about 60% of the world's vaccine and this is mostly done by uh, the punawala guys the uh, serum institute of india now and you know kudos to indian government for bringing out uh, india's you know two vaccine i'm really proud of that now we have to understand when we say india has produced vaccine it means it it, it also we, there's this whole uh, catch there the raw materials for the vaccine at least with the uh, serum institute's vaccine it's from astrazeneca so this has come from other countries and there are these contractual obligations since they are giving us the raw materials after the vaccines are produced certain number of doses have to be shipped out to other countries uh, wherever countries they have listed and also i guess uh, Uh, serum institute is a part of this global vaccine program that supplies vaccine to certain you know third world countries and all that uh so you know you might have heard people saying that modi has sent our uh, our share of vaccine to other countries that's not true it's just you know whatever is, was agreed upon was sent to other countries he didn't share you know send india's share per se and also there was a ban or a temporary ban put on the export of vaccines because indian government said you know let's take care of our people first and then we'll send it out to other countries also you have to you probably have heard about it i guess in january of this year um there was a fire that happened at the serum institute uh, production facility i believe in pune and there was while the vaccine uh, raw materials the covid vaccine raw materials were not destroyed the he was not able to 
uh, produce as many vaccines as he had promised India. So there were all these uh, constraints that happened. Nobody could foresee that. Of course, now India has, you know, the Bharat Biotech's vaccine, we have Sputnik, and they've come up with many other vaccines. Uh, they've lined up a lot of vaccines now, and I believe uh, U.S. is sending uh, more of AstraZeneca doses to us, about 60 million or 90 million doses. And India hopes to vaccinate about 260 million or 270 million by the end of uh, this year. That's that's the plan. Right. So. You know, uh, <clears throat> if I can say that uh, in, uh, you know, in Hindi, like, jitni misinformation, jitna chaos aap bharat mein macha sakte hain, aap macha lehen. Kyunki that is the, that is your, uh, you know, only way to, uh, to the, to that top seat. I think that's, that's what the agenda is. Anyway, so we can, now let's move on to, and this would be my final question to you. Uh, what do you think is the, has been the response of uh, BJP government's handling of the situation? Uh, how have, I, I think they have, somehow I, I feel they have failed in handling the narrative around uh, the vaccination and uh, uh, the death toll. And, you know, they have they've been a failure in handling, especially the international media. Um, I agree with you, actually. BJP is extremely bad at perception management. Our spokespersons and leaders in general at times tend to forget that we are in power. We need to stop being on the defensive all the time and stop this victimhood mentality. You know, a lot of them are doing a fabulous job at governance, but it's it almost seems like it never gets correctly conveyed to the general public. Communication is uh, not BJP's greatest suite, I mean, suit. Now, as a supporter of BJP, I'm giving this feedback. We need strong spokespersons who are not afraid to go on the offensive while listing the facts. We need more people that are straight shooters. We need people that are not afraid to call out the bluff. We need uh, people that, you know, spokespersons that can factually and aggressively discern opponents' facts from fiction. We need BJP to understand a lot of the core supporters are angry after the BJP, uh, the West Bengal fiasco. A lot of Kari Kartas, they have risked their lives, you know, in the BJP, uh, the West Bengal elections, and they're very upset that no help was extended to them during that time of distress. Nobody likes to see a party in power, you know, helplessly tweet about the desperate uh, law and order situation in a non-BJP state. It just gives a very poor image. Now with the COVID situation, first wave handling was great, a round of applause. With the second uh, wave, victory was announced prematurely. This should have been avoided, this whole celebration uh, victory over COVID celebrations, that should not have happened. While I'm all for, you know, following the traditions and rituals and everything, Kumbha Mela should have been restricted to just a symbolic celebration from the outset. This wasn't done. I give it to the government. The people that participated in the Kumbh Mela uh, were, uh, had to get uh, COVID, uh, the RT-PCR test. They had to have a, a COVID negative uh, uh, test. And, uh, you know, there were strict rules that were set in place, you know, with the mask and social distancing. But when, when there's such a large number of people gathering there, you can't really monitor each and every person individually. Most of them, you know, kind of in that, uh, when they are together in that, uh, you know, spiritual mood, if you will, they forget about all this. They'll forget their mask, the masks, 
or somewhere social distancing doesn't happen and that's that's exactly what happened here people got infected and you know they spread it to other people and bjp got blamed now with the election rallies bjp was ineffective in you know communicating to the people of india that they were uh, not for the actual you know in on ground rallies they were for uh, the digital rallies it was the opposition that didn't want it and you know bjp had to kind of uh, you know give it uh, but you know bjp didn't do that now with the medication shortages itself most of the world is suffering from shortages you know it could be any med you know that's used in the treatment of covid nonetheless there's shortage with our huge population this was kind of expected so at this point i feel india should consider integrating ayurvedic treatments too we are an abundant repository of you know native medicine knowledge of native medicine it's been successfully used to treat a variety of ailments and since ayurvedic experts now i'm talking only about the experts not you know any quack since they're claiming to have a cure for covid why can't we trust them and you make use of it at the end of the day it should not be a a competition of sorts between allopathy and ayurveda it it's not about who is better both have its uh, positives both have its negatives so why don't we integrate it why don't we make use of the abundant knowledge we have with ayurveda let's use that that that's my you know that's my concern as to why it's not being used also on this note i would like to add india needs some serious reforms when it comes to uh, medication prescribing you know you can walk into a pharmacy in india and pretty much get any med you want without a prescription this gives rise to a multitude of problems one would be you know hoarding of medications and then selling it in black market we saw that a lot here next self medication people will not know the side effects of the medication or whether they can take you know somebody tells them that they should take this for covid and they go ahead and take it and it's accessible uh, it's available to them without a prescription so why not walk up to a pharmacy instead of going to a doctor and actually getting tested let's just self medicate that's what is happening you know um, drug names and doses for covid treatment were being circulated on social media in whatsapp groups by people who are not in healthcare and that's extremely dangerous it's led to so much of hoarding too and i personally have witnessed people saying you know they should you should take uh, uh, steroids to help prevent covid now i don't even know where they got this from but i'm sure it was one of the whatsapp forwards because you know that has become the go to uh, source for many people whatsapp university yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then we turn around and wonder why there are so many opportunistic fungal infections that are happening why is it all of a sudden why it's rampant because people are self medicating whether they need it or not who takes steroids as a precaution you know you're lowering the body's immunity it it makes it, you're making it easier for you to get affected and then who gets blamed for it in the end modi you know we we do the stupidity and we get it now we already talked about the vaccine situation so there's no point in kind of going over it with the oxygen supply that's been a big controversy yes there have been some legitimate cases where oxygen cylinders uh, were not available beds were not available i have lost people to such um, instances then i turn around and i see some minister announcing on tv there is no shortage of oxygen it's just a hoax it's a fake news and you know all that does my blood boil at this absolutely it does but then i also understand the the logistics of it the problems that are uh, involved in you know oxygen transportation 
is there really scarcity of oxygen in India? Or has this been artificially created by the greedy few? Did we become overconfident after, you know, after our successful control of uh, or containment of the COVID first wave and kind of become complacent and, you know, things went out of control? Uh, did the government not foresee this this sudden explosion and demand for oxygen? Or is it just being blown out of proportion? I don't know. Nonetheless, whether it's one death due to lack of oxygen or thousand deaths due to lack, lack of oxygen, it should not be accepted. However, that's for BJP to answer and set things straight. At this point, I would really like to congratulate the silent worker of BJP, Mr. Piyush Goyal. Uh, he has introduced these oxygen express trains that travel all over India. And till date, it's delivered, I think, about uh, 15,000 metric tons of oxygen, you know, to various parts of India. So it's, it's uh, you know, carried about, there are, I think there were about 234 trains that carried about 934 oxygen tankers. So, you know, there are people that are working great. It's just not being told to people. A lot of the general public doesn't know what's going on. And that's in BJP's hands to convey this. I would just like to end this by saying, let us applaud the government of India when brilliant steps are taken to help contain the COVID situation. Let us ask tough questions. Let us hold the government accountable when we don't have answers, uh, when we have severe shortages. But let the intent be honest. Let the intent not be to just oust Prime Minister Modi. That's all I have to say. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, on this point, I, I would like, like to add a couple of things uh, before we end this session. So on the uh, Ayurveda versus uh, allopathy issue, I think um, to a certain extent, I, I noticed that there is some sense of, uh, you know, pride in uh, just using the Ayurveda uh, for, uh, for cure and not uh, falling upon uh, uh, allopathy. So like you said, I mean, both the uh, systems of uh, medicine, they have their own advantages and disadvantages. So why why can't we make it as, it as, a, as a situation based? So allopathy helps, you know, when the, the situation is extremely critical. Ayurveda helps in bringing, uh, you know, your immunity up in, for, for the long term. Yes. So why not just you know forget about your f uh, false sense of pride right. and keep it keep it aside. Uh, we understand it's an age-old practice and there are you know some emotions attached to us it as well. You know, and especially from a religion perspective, there are some people uh, you know use that as well. But I, I would still say you know just to use both when um, how, depending on the situation it. Uh, we are in yes, now, on the other, now on the other part like you know I, I would like to tell uh, uh, the viewers if they don't know that I think it came the last week when uh, it was announced that uh, Doodarchan is going to uh, start their own uh, channel for international coverage DD mm -hmm. International yes. so I congratulate the Indian government for uh, thinking about it I don't know how uh, good it turned out to be given the kind I of really uh, hope to god we have to get the right narrative fingers you know, crossed i fingers crossed i hope uh, it it doesn't get uh, stuck in uh, bureaucracy and uh, red tapeism and i don't know how but okay i mean to give it to them for now at least i would applaud uh, that they have they're thinking in those terms i think every uh, every nation has their own uh, channel uh, or a communication uh, TV channel where they they could express their own their side of the story. Mm -hmm. So with, with that, I I would like to end this session. I thank you again for uh, being for on the me. panel, and uh, we stay. wish all the viewers who who listen to uh, Rupa Murthy ji stay safe, stay blessed, 
and please wear your mask follow the all the uh, medical uh, guidelines which the doctors are telling you to please uh, this is of these are re really very tough times so stay safe stay blessed namaste